Hey guys, welcome back to another What The Fitness. And our What The Fitness is a write-in this week and it comes from Ivan Guan. I hope I said that right. And he sent us an article on uh, Jim Stepani's website. I just want to give a little one minute background. I had met Jim previously, years ago, probably almost 10 years ago now. He was very nice to me. He's always been very nice to me. Over the years, my opinion, I have noticed that Jim is very willing to exaggerate or misrepresent various scientific studies, in my opinion, in order to sell his supplements. Have I sold supplements before? Yes. Will I sell them again in the future? Yes. But I am not willing to distort scientific research to overhype or attempt to sell my supplements. This article is about amino acids from supplements versus whole food. And I'll read you some snippets out of this. Why pre-workout and post-workout supplements matter. Basically he says uh, he promotes his protein powder, which is fine, and talks about how the branched chain amino acids or the amino acids responsible for initiating muscle protein synthesis. True. In fact, my research was literally on branched amino acids. This is my wheelhouse. This is what I did my PhD on. This is what I spent a decade of my life devoted to. And I love leucine. I love branched chain amino acids. I used to sell a product with branched chain amino acids in it. My new line that will be coming out, I don't know when, and I don't wanna give too much away, but I'll have a new line coming out. I'm no longer selling branched amino acids but we'll get to that. So he talks about how there's a debate over the anabolic window. Again, he's trying to promote um, using protein supplements post-workout and whether or not it actually exists. And he talked about there was a Canadian study that showed that whether or not lifters took protein after the workout or any time in a 24-hour period, they had the same anabolic response. So this led to many experts to jump the gun and claim there was no need to worry about nutrients around a workout. I think, and I could be wrong, I believe he's talking about a paper from Brad Schoenfeld and Alan Argon discussing whether or not an anabolic window actually exists. It is hard for someone who doesn't publish to put Brad Schoenfeld's name in their mouth. Brad Schoenfeld is the number two ranked exercise science researcher in the entire world. Brad is exceptional and I have found him to be one of the most vigorous scientists I've ever met. So then he talks about how um, when they used the, the same study on train lifters, the uh, post-workout protein synthesis was only maximized when they consumed protein within eight hours after the workout. So yes, I agree. It's probably a good idea to have protein within a few hours after your training. It helps the recovery process. But then he jumps from that to, so trust me when I say that if you want to maximize muscle growth, consume a mixed protein powder and extra BCAs both before and right after workouts. That's not what that study said. That study was eight hours. Now, do I think that it's a good idea to have some protein relatively soon after your workout? Yes. But telling people you need particularly a protein supplement right after your workout, you don't. Eat protein. If you would like to consume a protein supplement because you enjoy that or because maybe you have GI distress if you eat too soon after workout, fine. But it's not superior. There's no evidence it's superior. Then he kind of parlays that into even if you're already sold on the fact that getting protein amino acids around your workout is ideal to maximize muscle growth, you may not understand that the source of protein and or amino acids is also critical. There's a reason I recommend a protein shake and BCAAs around workouts instead of whole food. And a new research from Japan confirms this is the best way to maximize muscle growth. The researchers had male students consume two grams of the BCA leucine in one of two forms, in free form via powdered leucine or from whole food or from a whole food or or from a whole food meal comprised mainly of fish, egg, milk, and rice. The amounts of leucine that made it into the subject's blood at various times was measured to see if there were any differences in the way nutrients like amino acids were absorbed. To many people's surprise, except mine, actually this wouldn't have been a surprise to me either, Jim, the student's blood leucine concentrations from taking two grams of leucine via free form supplement were nearly 140% higher than the two grams of leucine from a whole food meal. That's not surprising. If you give a free-form leucine supplement, you will rapidly spike leucine levels. What he's not telling you, and some research we did in our lab, is that spike in response to a free-form leucine supplement lasts about an hour. 
If you give even whey protein, it lasts about three hours. If you give a whole food meal, like they're discussing here, it lasts like five hours. There is something to be said for increasing amino acids, but if you get enough leucine, you will increase it. What he's also not telling you is that, yes, it increases leucine in the blood more when you take a free form leucine supplement. In fact, there's studies looking at BCAAs or leucine free form versus whey protein and they, surprise, surprise, show that even at the same total amount of leucine, giving a free form leucine supplement spikes plasma leucine greater than whey. Guess what? Free form leucine increases muscle protein synthesis about 22%, according to a new study uh, by Kevin Tipton, who's one of the top protein researchers in the world. You know what whey protein increases muscle protein synthesis by? About 50%. Once you get above a certain level of leucine concentrations in the blood, simply giving more leucine does not further augment the synthetic response. You need to hit a threshold of leucine. Once you hit that threshold for maximum anabolism, just throwing more leucine in after it is not going to further increase it. Either Jim doesn't read the research and doesn't know this, or he reads the research and chooses to ignore that aspect of it because it is not good for sales. I would encourage Jim to be more transparent with these research studies. I still think there may be some application for a branched chain amino acid supplement and leucine. However, I am not going to have it in my next line of products because I don't think the research out there justifies including it, even though I think there's some pretty good research in terms of delayed onset muscle soreness. I just don't think for what people take BCAAs for or leucine for that it warrants the extra cost. You can get it from whey and whey, quite honestly, is probably better. And this is tough for me to say because for years I've said, hey, I really think BCAAs or leucine could have some really good benefits. I, I, I love leucine because it's what I did my PhD on. But based on the latest evidence, I can't consider myself a good scientist if I say, hey, it's a muscle builder, because it's not. If you eat enough total protein, you will get what you need. If you are somebody who is, for example, here we go, a vegan, and you have trouble getting enough high quality protein, then something like an isolated branched amino acid supplement or leucine supplement may be viable for you. Because if you're not gonna consume any animal products and you're not gonna consume whey or egg or other high quality isolated proteins, then perhaps a leucine or a branched chain amino acid supplement is a good idea for you. My research actually showed that when you added free leucine to a intact protein like wheat, that is a pretty low quality protein and low in leucine, when you added free leucine to max the leucine content of whey, you actually were able to have the same amount of muscle protein synthetic response. So I think there's where the application for something like leucine or branched amino acids is. But it's, it's really disappointing for me because I can't really speak to Jim's intentions in terms of what's in his head. Maybe he's not keeping up with the research. I'm, I'm not sure. But that, that's pretty disappointing to me that he would try and spend some of this research to try to use it to sell products. I'm not saying that I have never talked about research studies and talked about a product I sell because I have but I've always tried to do it with the utmost integrity of keeping with what the science actually says. So anyways, I'm sure I'll get a lot of blowback about this. I'm sure people will send it to Jim. He may have a response. That's fine. I welcome his response. I hope the industry changes. I really do. Uh, one of the reasons my old supplement line went under was uh, because I just wasn't willing to promote supplements the way everybody else does. I wasn't willing to say, this is gonna get you massive. I wasn't willing to say this is the best thing ever. I just said what it did. And I said they were a small, very small part of the puzzle. And we didn't sell very well. I'm hoping that there is a place in this industry for that kind of company. I guess we'll find out. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll catch you next week.